going to show you how to make a kinetic sculpture in Houdini. And when I first saw this gentleman's amazing work, I immediately thought of Houdini because it's just made to do cool stuff like this. I want to highlight this black ellipse for the purposes of this tutorial for several reasons. And I just love how these are all plates and they're repeated in size. You can see they taper off, but there is a limit and a constraint system that he has built in that's very subtle. And we need to replicate that in Houdini and it's quite simple. I'll show you exactly how, but if there was no rotation limit, per plate, these little round things, this guy would look like chaos. They wouldn't line up like this uh, if they were to, they kind of carry each other along. So I'll show you how to achieve that in Houdini, but mostly it's up to you to take this further and do really amazing things. So let's get started by placing a tube. Got a few other things going on here. Don't forget to turn on your color palette uh, so that you can make boxes and color things. I like to color my geometry in green, uh, my lighting in yellow. You can also make something red and say, hey, this is broken, don't mess with it. Blue, it's a work in progress. You, know, you can do whatever system you have that makes it work. So right away, I'm gonna change this to a NURB to make it nice and smooth. I'm gonna reduce that height. And you definitely want those end caps. And by going into your point mode, you can start pulling these things and shaping something interesting. Um, do be careful to grab the right ones and only go out on the one axis. And this one dimension that you're going all in X. So I'm going to go over to one I already made. This guy, I think, was pretty neat. Yeah, so there's my tube, and after pulling and stretching, I came up with this. And I'll bring that over there. Here's where the magic happens. It's a copy node. Copy and transform. You already know by now to press the tab key and to type in COPY and drop that guy down and connect it. So what you're about to experience is the, the true power of Houdini. You've got your total number right here under your copy transform node. We're gonna take that to 30 and begin to transform those copies. Already we have a kinetic sculpture. We've got a kinetic sculpture. Do learn, if you haven't already, the keyboard shortcut spacebar F. That's going to um, center your geometry and you're going to run into situations where you know you're roaming out here perhaps. I love that. So already it looks kind of like a building in Dubai. Let's get some lighting going. Uh, I just dropped down a skylight because it has global illumination and that's going to give you some nice uh, results with your geometry. I've already used a few preset materials And I have oxidized steel there. And by going to the render view, um, get an idea of what that looks like. All right, so it's not too interesting now. It looks like just a stack of geometry. By going into rotate, you're gonna start to see where this thing will twist. And at some point, it's going to look like chaos, like right in there, it's starting to look messy. So what you do is take this to a manageable place a design that you like, and simply remember that number. I found that around here looks pretty good. We're gonna take this number 13 and remember it and erase it. <clears throat> There's nothing really driving this right now, is it? It's not a moving sculpture. There's no wind blowing it. So let's get rid of that and add a sine wave. We're gonna make it go back and forth, and we wanna use dollar sign F, not dollar sign T, because that gives us time in increments of tens, one, two, three, four, five. We wanna go by frames and get a very nice smooth motion. So let's play that and see exactly what it does. Already it's starting to move, isn't it? Comes up to here, it's gonna sway back. Okay, this is, this is very hypnotic, putting me to sleep. We wanna obviously multiply that whole value 
to what did, what was our message? It's 15, I think. Mm -hmm. You want to type in that number, and there it's going to take you to your limit. So already we have that sort of system inside of there locking these and saying, don't go past that value with your sine wave. So if we take this to 10 seconds, which is 300 frames, we can count how many times it rotates and see if it's a pace that you like. So we're one, two, really two sine waves within 10 seconds. That's not a bad pace. If you wanted to increase that, you have to go in to the parentheses and multiply time by two. You wouldn't take that out here and multiply that because that's your rotation value. So now we have something rotating just a little bit quicker. In a nutshell, that is it. But there's one important thing happening. You'll notice that the base of this isn't moving at all. It seems like it's affixed to the floor. It's not really a kinetic sculpture, right? So how do we change that? We're going to rotate it at the top level. The entire thing needs to be turning on its axis. So let's go with dollar sign time. And now we will want to make it go a little faster. So dollar sign F rather frame. And now you can see the base is rotating. And you've also got that reverse sign that's carrying it back. You've got a very interesting sculpture. I hope you've benefited by this. And, and you can see the raw power of Houdini and what it can do. Um, do go into the copy stamp mode, or rather the copy node. Copy stamp is a whole other tutorial. And mess with your pivot, and you will create things that no real world artist can really do. You have, in order for Mr. Ivan to create this, he would need some sort of um, bendable center. Um, but by changing the pivot points, you can get some very interesting things. And you can also go a little crazy on your number. Um, of copies, though at this point I would advise taking your NURB and exporting that guy as a BGO using your um, export. But anyway, um, export that as geometry and then bring it back in. It will be less processor intensive. OK, let's go to our render view and take a look at that. It looks pretty with the global illumination. I hope you subscribe and I hope you stay tuned. Next, I'll be talking about cameras and controlling them in a predictable way.